Dear students, we were discussing the impact of computer science and today's module is on content filtering, email spams and international laws. So we have discussed that there are many many issues that can affect the lives of the humans. For example, the issues of privacy are seeing illegal content on the internet and some related things. So there is a concept known as content filtering in computer science that using a program to prevent access to certain items. So you have a program and that program is helping you to not access some of the illegal content. Or for example, that program is helping the parents that they set that program, they configured that program in a way that illegal or problematic content is not viewable to the kids. So this kind of content might be harmful if opened or accessed and the most common items to filter are executables, emails or websites. So these three are the main things which need to be filtered. So for example, if there is any executable, executable is a file that actually runs and that is for example when you click on that file so the program is running into your RAM and that is performing certain actions so that have normally the extension of .exe so you might have seen that whenever there is .exe file some of the messages arrived when you try to open that it could be harmful so that is trying to prevent you. If you know that this is a valid .exe file, then of course there is no harm to use that. Then uh, the emails need to be filtered. You might have received many, many uh, emails which are fake emails, which are spam emails. So those emails which uh, tells you that you have become millionaire, and if you go onto this website, do this, 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 then you will be given a lot of money, etc., etc. So all of such emails need to be filtered and similar websites which have illegal content need to be filtered. So how it works? In content filtering softwares, normally there is a string matching, which means that you have identified the problematic uh, concepts or URLs and those URLs are given to the software and whenever someone tries to uh, use that or access that URL then that URL is not accessible because that is protected. So when the string matches the content is not allowed through content filters are often part of internet firewalls so normally they are part of the firewall and in such a usage content filtering is serving a security purpose. Content filtering is also used to implement company's policy related to information system usage. For example, it's common to filter websites like Facebook, YouTube, etc., which are considered unrelated to work. So, for example, if you're working in an organization and in that organization, they do not want to allow you to use YouTube and Facebook. So, they will simply put that URL in the content filtering software or firewall and this means that this URL cannot be accessed in the network of that company. Then there are spam emails and email spam continues to become a major issue in computer science. Government around the world have put specific regulations in place to protect their citizens from spam. So there are two um, parties. One party is the content filtering and such kind of softwares which are trying to help you and then there is another part other party which is the government organizations or some um, uh, some other organizations which try to make some act that if you want to send email to some stranger or to someone then you need to follow certain things so there are different laws like can spam act in us Canada's anti-spam legislation, CASL, then anti-spam law in Europe, Spam Act of 2003 in Australia, and Africa, Asia, and South America have looser 
spam law requirements. So let's little bit discuss about these acts. For example, the CAN Spam Act says that do not use false or misleading header information in your emails. Don't use deceptive subject lines that other person whenever sees it receives a, a deception and then identify the message as an ad. So if you are sending an advertisement, then try to identify that that message is a ad. Do not say that this is very important message for you. And if you do not read this message, then your life will be finished. So do not use such tricks. Then tell recipients where you are located. This is very important that if they want to visit you, if they want to reach you, then your identity should be available. Then can spam act have certain other things. For example, honor opt out request promptly and monitor what others are doing on your behalf. So this means the major requirements are ask for permission before adding emails. So if you want to add some of the email into your uh, email accounts. So for example, if you have a uh, email contacts to whom you want to communicate. So before adding anyone's email to that particular directory, you need to take permission. User could identify you as sender. Do not give email address to others and be honest. So let's summarize today's module. We have discussed about content filtering, uh, email spams and some of the international laws. And we have discussed little bit more details on can spam law and what uh, that law uh, give you the privileges and guidelines uh, to the users that they should try to meet those things to really make the life easier for the users. And we have discussed important social impact of IT.